Thanks to CuriosityStream for supporting PBS Digital Studios. Um, one second. <laughs> what do we have here? Oh no, no, those are cashews. So is this like a bowl full of death to you? Yes, well, cashews aren't as strong of a reaction for me, but I am allergic to tree nuts. It's not fun, it's not fun at all. Hey smart people, Joe here. I recently invited my friend Wheezy Waiter to come by and talk about food allergies. Just one. They're not real cashews, they're stunt cashews. Of course, you should never trick a friend with the food that they're allergic to, but it's okay. Wheezy Waiter and I are friends, and I'm a doctor. These days, most of us know someone with a food allergy, some food they have to avoid eating or even coming into contact with in order to avoid a dangerous reaction or even death. But why are people allergic to food? And why are food allergies on the rise? It's nuts. Mm. Nuts. But maybe I'm just getting old, but it seems like food allergies are more common than they used to be. Well, we're not imagining things. Scientific data backs that up. The percentage of children with food allergy has definitely increased in recent years. I'm allergic to all tree nuts. So I'm allergic to walnuts, pine nuts, almonds, cashews, hazelnuts, macadamia nuts, pistachios here in Texas, pecans, like everywhere. Not pecans. No. Pecans. I always say pecans, but you've taught me it's pecans. Yeah, I've taught so, you the right way. Yeah. That stuff ends up in a yeah. lot of different foods. Yeah. So I imagine you have to have accidentally encountered this stuff before. I, I have accidentally encountered almost all those that I listed. What happens? What happens is my mouth swells up, my throat swells up, I get hives, I get hives in my lungs, I can't breathe, horrible stomach ache, and it lasts for, I don't know, two or three hours. But I don't think about reading labels, and that's a whole difference about how we navigate the world as like, mm. things that I don't have to think about, and you do. And especially now, it seems like the nuts are cropping up in everything, like barbecue sauce or cocktails, like drinks now, <laughs> like they have walnut bitters in them. To make matters even more confusing, adults can also become allergic to foods that they never had issues with as children. I'm Emily Grassley. I am the host and creator of the YouTube channel, The Brain Scoop, and I work for the Field Museum as their chief curiosity correspondent. So I saw on Twitter recently that you aren't getting along with certain kinds of nuts very well anymore? Yeah, yeah I've never had a problem really with any sort of food, you know, I, but otherwise never have had any sort of allergy whatsoever. Then a weird thing happened. Why don't we try almond milk for the first time? I had never tried it um, the next morning, just routine morning on my way to work. I had my bowl of cereal, poured the almond milk on it, and I, and I got to work and I noticed that my nose was just dripping like a faucet. And I realized like I was hot and itching. And I noticed that I was just absolutely covered in full body hives. And I just was like, this is really weird. Now a true food allergy is different from a food intolerance. This is really important. Like if you're lactose intolerant and you can't digest cow's milk, it can make you feel really sick. You know, aches and pains and digestive troubles, that kind of stuff. But if you're allergic to milk, it could kill you. A true allergy is when your body's immune system has a reaction to the food on a molecular level. It's your body treating food as a germ or an invader, which actually that doesn't make sense. Let's look at how this works. Food is made up of lots of different molecular bits like fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. We're gonna focus in on the proteins. Everything we eat has proteins and they come in a variety of shapes. Our bodies usually digest food proteins down to their most basic units, but some food proteins don't get completely broken down and they escape into the body where they meet the immune system. Now it's your immune system's job to recognize protein shapes that come from dangerous invaders, viruses, bacteria, things like that sneaking around your body. But peanut butter should not cause this reaction. This makes no sense. I mean, cobras, jellyfish, really big wasps, maybe. But not deliciously roasted legumes. Molecules called antibodies stick to the foreign food molecule, leading to the release of a chemical called histamine, which makes you really itchy. Or if the reaction is bad enough, it can cause anaphylaxis, where the entire body just goes haywire from dizziness to swelling to your ability to breathe. And so I started looking up like 
you know, can you just develop an almond allergy or, or a tree nut allergy as an adult? And you, and you can. And I said, well, what could cause it? The only unusual thing was this almond milk. So I immediately made an appointment with an allergist. We needed to determine if almonds specifically had caused this allergic reaction. So honestly, we did this food challenge and nothing happened. Nothing happened. So you're sitting there now and you still have no idea what triggered this, what it really was, or what you might meet again that could give you a problem. Right. And it could be nothing. It could be something else that I ate. Emily had an allergic reaction to something. In cases like these, even doctors can be stumped. In the meantime, he told me when I left the office that day that I needed to operate as though I had a life-threatening tree nut allergy. And so he prescribed me epinephrine and I have like an epinephrine injector that I have to carry with me everywhere. I have to spend the next year carrying this around with me and maybe have to use it on some mystery food that we don't know. I keep coming back to one basic question. Why would our bodies bother to have such extreme reactions, reactions that could kill us after a handful of trail mix or a glass of milk? The truth is, we don't know why food allergies exist. There is a leading theory, and I should stress, this is just a theory, that allergies might exist thanks to parasites. The part of our immune system that recognizes allergy-causing food also reacts to certain wormy, buggy infections. Humans are a lot cleaner than we used to be, back before hand sanitizer and indoor plumbing, and, you know, science. Today, we don't have as many parasites entering our bodies, so maybe that bit of our immune system is just bored? So it's overreacting and attacking foreign-looking proteins in our food instead. Our clean, sterile, no-dirt-eating lifestyles could be behind the rise in allergies of all kinds. But that's just a theory, a parasite. It, wait, that's not my catchphrase. What am I doing? Peanut allergies are the most common food allergy, affecting nearly one in 40 kids in the US. In all, we know of at least 400 proteins from more than 170 foods that cause allergic reactions, with eight foods accounting for 90% of those. Now, a lot of people are allergic to shrimp and other shellfish, and a lot of those people are also allergic to little bugs called dust mites. Now, shrimp, shellfish, and dust mites are all invertebrates, and all of them trigger allergies thanks to a protein called tropomyosin. Well, they share that protein, and it's very different from anything our bodies make. This is an example of cross-reactivity. Like, if you're allergic to cashews, you might also be allergic to pistachios or mangoes, since they're all in the same plant family. <laughs> I'm telling you, evolution explains everything. So how can you avoid food allergies for you or your kids? Well, just a decade or two ago, doctors recommended not giving young kids foods that commonly trigger allergies for at least the first few years of their life. But that was actually the exact wrong advice. Food allergy rates continued to rise, so doctors changed their recommendations. Today's advice suggests parents should slowly introduce common allergic foods, early and in small amounts. And it seems like it's working. Food allergy rates have stopped rising, at least. I mean, we're parents now. Mm -hmm. How does your having an allergy affect, you know, what you're introducing your child to? Uh, I, pro if it were up to me, I probably would be incredibly uh, more wimpy about it, but my wife, my wife is introducing all these things. Like, like what she introduced all the all the nuts to her so far, and she's not allergic. So, so yeah, you said I got nervous every yeah. time, but yeah, she's fine. If you already have a food allergy, unfortunately, there's no cure. We're developing treatments like getting the immune system accustomed to allergy-causing foods in small doses. There's even a sticker that acts almost like a nicotine patch for peanut allergy. But please remember. Always talk to a doctor before you attempt any treatment. I know, okay? Sadly, with food allergies, there's still more questions than there are answers. We know what's causing them, we know a little bit about how to prevent them, but we don't know why they exist or how to cure them. It's really stressful to, to not know what caused it and to not have any reliable way of testing what caused it. You take for granted um, not when you don't have a food allergy, you can go wherever you want, right? And eat anything. And um, so you're um, automatically, your world like shrinks quite a bit. Every restaurant you go to, every lunch that you eat, if you didn't prepare it yourself, 
I'm wondering like, is this going to have something in it that could kill me? And am I allergic to almonds? And if it's not almonds, then what is it? Are people taking me seriously? That's a big concern that people who have food allergies are is, but it can be life threatening. Is it frustrating that people can't give you an answer about why this happens? Yes, I would love a cure. That would be great. Yeah. Do you have a cure? Are you going to introduce a cure? Well, it's <laughs> called exposure therapy. <laughs> but every scientific question that we know the answer to today was once a mystery just like this. An answer barely out of reach in the fog of not knowing yet. Someday, we'll figure it out. Some nuts are just tougher to crack than others. Stay curious. Hey guys, thanks for checking out today's video. Really hope you enjoyed it. The PBS Digital Studios family of YouTube channels just keeps on getting bigger, and I wanna tell you about a brand new one. If you're a music fan, which is probably most of you, you should check out Soundfield. They break down the history and culture behind our favorite songs and artists. I was recently on an episode over there talking about where mathematical ratios show up in different kinds of music, like the golden ratio, the Fibonacci sequence, things like that. You can check it out at a link down in the description. We also wanna say thanks to CuriosityStream for supporting PBS Digital Studios. CuriosityStream, if you don't already know, is a subscription streaming service that offers documentaries and nonfiction titles from a variety of filmmakers. And their collection features a bunch of CuriosityStream originals. But while we're on the topic of food, you can check out a CuriosityStream original called Prescription Nutrition, which looks at the latest science of how what we eat impacts our health and what kind of diet and lifestyle changes are actually supported by research. You can learn more at curiositystream.com slash smart. Can you Come keep on, that away from me, please? Just have just one. Keep that away from me. Don't eat these. Okay. They're, they're very dangerous. I won't. Are we insured for this? <laughs>